Sven Beckert, Empire of Cotton, A Global History Welcome to the fascinating world of cotton weaving through the pages of Empire of Cotton, A Global History by Sven Beckert. In this enlightening journey, you'll discover how cotton has been a thread connecting different cultures for thousands of years across Africa, Asia, and America before being elevated to global significance by European explorers. Embark on a voyage that takes you from ancient cotton weaving practices to the multi-continent cotton triangle initiated by Europeans, the mechanized cotton mills of the Industrial Revolution, and to the far-reaching impacts of colonialism in the cotton industry. This comprehensive summary unravels the myriad transformations and complex histories that have shaped the cotton empire into the colossal force it is today. The Global Cotton Empire Cotton, a versatile fabric found around us nearly at all times, has captivated humanity for thousands of years. Its history starts with ancient societies in Africa, Asia, and America, who independently discovered its remarkable qualities for making cloth. By the 1500s, cotton had made its way to Mexico, where it was used to pay tributes to Aztec rulers, as well as India, the west coast of Africa, and 15th century China, where it served as a tax currency. At this point, cotton remained a regionally inaccessible commodity, until the arrival of Europeans who interconnected the cotton growers worldwide. Unaware of cotton's existence before their global expeditions, Europeans found a deep love for the versatile fabric and ignited a violent yet profitable cotton trade that spanned three continents. This marked the beginning of the global cotton empire, which has grown and transformed significantly since its inception. Birth of Mechanized Cotton Industry In 1784, Samuel Gregg forever changed the cotton industry by opening the first mechanized cotton mill in England. This technological advancement significantly boosted productivity and slashed costs, allowing British manufacturers to outcompete Indian weavers. As a result, British cotton prices dropped drastically, enabling the country to become the global leader in cotton exports. Countries like France, Germany, and Belgium followed suit, implementing measures to protect their domestic cotton industries from foreign competition. This led to a divide between countries that industrialized early and those that didn't, which still shapes the disparity between developed and developing nations today. In 1784, a monumental shift occurred in the world of textiles, when Samuel Gregg established the first mechanized cotton mill near Manchester, England. Powered by the River Bolin, the mill marked the beginning of a new era in cotton production. As mechanization caught on, productivity soared and costs dropped, providing a substantial economic advantage to British manufacturers. This rapid development in machinery allowed Britain to outcompete traditional Indian weavers. For example, 18th century Indian spinners took 50,000 hours to spin 100 pounds of cotton. However, by 1825, British workers using machines needed only 135 hours to achieve the same output. Consequently, British cotton prices fell by up to 50% between 1795 and 1811, paving the way for Britain to become the world's foremost exporter of cotton goods. The annual value of British cotton exports surged 16-fold within 20 years, reaching £5,854,057 by 1800. Other countries, such as France, Germany, and Belgium, recognized the benefits of mechanization and implemented protectionist measures to safeguard their domestic cotton industries from foreign competition, particularly from Britain. For instance, France blocked all British cotton goods from 1806 to 1814, stimulating the continental European cotton market. These protectionist measures, combined with a strong state presence, police force, military, and legal system, allowed these countries to industrialize more rapidly than those lacking such infrastructure, such as India, which had been significantly weakened by British colonization. Ultimately, this acceleration in industrialization led to a distinct divide between early industrialized countries and those lagging behind, which continues to shape the gap between developed and developing nations today. Cotton's Bloody Rise The skyrocketing demand for cotton in the late 18th century left Britain seeking new sources for the raw material. 
Initially, much of their cotton supply came from European colonies such as Barbados, wrought with the harsh realities of slave labor. However, these small islands could not produce enough cotton to meet the growing demand. Amidst colonial chaos, including the Haitian Revolution in 1791, the southern United States emerged as the ideal cotton supplier. Unrivaled agricultural land and brutal exploitation of slave labor enabled the southern states to become the world leader in cotton production. This devastating chapter in history reveals the horrifying human cost behind the thriving textile industry. Unseen Heroes of Industrialization The Industrial Revolution is often credited to famous inventors and groundbreaking discoveries, but the real driving force behind this transformative era were the millions of anonymous workers laboring under inhumane conditions. The first industrialized nation, the United Kingdom, witnessed these terrible working conditions, as illustrated by the testimony of Ellen Houghton in 1833. Her story reflects the reality for countless other workers who endured long hours, physical abuse, and shame, all for meager wages. This new rhythm of work, dictated by machines instead of nature, became the norm for many. With factories replacing home-based production, weavers were forced into servitude in these brutal conditions. Women, in particular, found their livelihoods overtaken by mechanized manufacturing, and many factory workers were from vulnerable populations, including children from orphanages and impoverished families. Cotton Revolution, Global Networks the industrialization of the cotton industry in the 19th century led to the emergence of a new merchant class that connected growers, slaves, manufacturers, and investors worldwide. With manufacturers relying on brokers instead of dealers, trust-based networks became essential for success in the high-risk cotton trading market. The Rothschild family exemplifies how leveraging such networks enabled rapid investment returns in this globalized, modern capitalist world. In the mid-19th century, industrialization worked wonders for cotton production. Millions flocked to the myriad factories producing cotton goods. However, the industry's evolution wasn't confined to the manufacturing process. Merchants were revolutionizing how business was conducted, creating an interdependent global network that continues to shape our modern capitalist world. Merchants were essential, linking cultivators, slaves, manufacturers, and financiers across the globe, from Gujarat to Manchester, to Istanbul. These middlemen paved the way for increased global connectivity, transforming the economy in the process. Besides, manufacturers began sourcing cotton from brokers rather than dealers, who facilitated deals between manufacturers and importers without actually owning the cotton. This shift rendered networking critical to success in the increasingly high-risk cotton trading world, where a single mishap could lead to bankruptcy. To mitigate risks, the most successful players cultivated trust-based networks around family, religion, or geography. The Rothschild family perfectly illustrates this strategy at work. When Nathan Mayer Rothschild ventured into the cotton business in Manchester in 1799, he leaned on his connections with fellow Jews from his hometown of Frankfurt. Rothschild's network enabled him to confidently buy cotton in bulk, as he knew his connections would purchase from him. Businesses extended credit for him to invest in factories, primarily due to the trust they had placed in him. As a result, Rothschild tripled his initial investment in a remarkably short time, thus kickstarting a successful investment career. Trust-based networks, industry innovations, and the growth of geographical connections inspired by the cotton industry laid the foundation for our present interconnected, global capitalist society. Cotton and the Civil War As the cotton industry grew rapidly, a clash emerged between the new class of American industrial capitalists, who employed wage labor and sought global expansion, and the old southern planter elite, determined to maintain slavery. This conflict culminated in the American Civil War, significantly disrupting the global cotton industry. British imports from the United States dropped 96% by 1862, prompting European manufacturers to secure new sources, like India, where British colonial officials had built new infrastructure. With reduced import taxes, India emerged as the dominant supplier of cotton globally. 
Although the Civil War concluded in 1865 and the end of slavery disrupted the Southern cotton stronghold, the industry adapted and found an alternative workforce. Sharecropping and Global Cotton Evolution When slavery ended in America, the cotton workforce declined, yet demand continued to soar, doubling between 1860 and 1890. Sharecropping emerged as a new working relationship, with freed slaves working on former plantation lands and receiving a share of the crops they cultivated. Meanwhile, the enforcement of property rights significantly transformed global agriculture, particularly in India. The British introduced private ownership, compelling farmers to take expensive loans for seeds and tools, inadvertently benefiting cotton-buying manufacturers with reduced prices. The transition from slavery brought forth a pressing concern in the American South, who would work in the cotton fields to meet the ever-growing, global demand for cotton. In response, a new system known as sharecropping unfolded. This compromise allowed freed individuals to work on land owned by previous plantation masters, granting them a portion of the crops they produced in exchange for their labor. Simultaneously, the nature of agriculture underwent a significant shift worldwide, thanks to the introduction of property rights in regions like India. Traditionally, Indian farmland was communally owned, with workers entitled to a portion of the collective harvest. However, the British Empire's enforcement of property rights during the second half of the 19th century altered this arrangement. Suddenly, Indian farmers individually owned smaller plots of land and could retain all the crops they grew. Unfortunately, a critical issue arose, these individual farmers lacked the funds to purchase seeds and tools for cultivation. Consequently, they found themselves reliant on costly loans from saukers, or moneylenders, often pledging their newly acquired land as collateral. Farmers fell into debt, paying excessive interest rates up to 30%, which led them to produce increasingly more cotton in an attempt to clear their financial burdens. Ultimately, this evolving landscape proved highly beneficial to cotton manufacturers who sought raw materials. By 1894, cotton prices for U.S. buyers plunged to 7 cents, considerably lower than the pre-Civil War cost of 11 cents. Thus, sharecropping and the global transformation of agriculture had a lasting impact on the cotton industry. Cotton's Global Power Shift During the early 20th century, emerging world powers Russia and Japan entered the cotton industry, with Japan's cotton demand skyrocketing. To achieve raw material independence, Japan began cultivating cotton in its colonies, such as Korea, where production increased significantly. Concurrently, Russia and the United States expanded cotton production in their respective colonies. This growth led to the deindustrialization of local industries via tariffs and duties, leading to millions of traditional cotton workers losing their jobs. Consequently, locals became dependent on fluctuating global cotton prices, which in some cases led to devastating results, such as famines in India. At the dawn of the new century, cotton became a vital industry for emerging world powers, especially Japan and Russia. Japan's demand for cotton skyrocketed, and its imports of raw cotton jumped from 125 million pounds in 1893 to over 1 billion pounds by 1920. Being cautious about relying on other countries for imports, Japan sought to establish its own raw material independence. Consequently, they began cultivating cotton in their colonies, including Korea, where production grew exponentially. Simultaneously, Russia and the United States expanded their cotton production, seizing new lands for cultivation in their colonies. Between 1860 and 1920, at least 55 million acres of land in Africa, Asia, and the Americas transformed into cotton fields. However, such expansion required the colonial powers to dismantle pre-existing industries in these regions. This process, known as deindustrialization, employed tactics such as imposing tariffs and duties on colonies, consequently crushing local production of cotton goods. The deindustrialization process had devastating consequences. Infrastructure, like massive railroads, was focused on supporting the global cotton industry rather than local weavers. In India alone, up to 6 million people employed in traditional cotton spinning or weaving lost their jobs between 1830 and 1860. 
these changes left the locals at the mercy of fluctuating global cotton prices. In the 1890s, for example, plummeting cotton prices combined with rising Indian food costs resulted in 19 million people succumbing to famine. Cotton's Global Power Shift The 20th century saw a significant shift in the global cotton industry as newly industrializing nations, fueled by low wages and government support, emerged as dominant players. This was an era where countries like Britain and Germany, with strong labor unions and increasing wages, saw their influence wane. Meanwhile, nations such as China and India, with their low-cost workforce and strategic government assistance, leaped at the opportunity to conquer the industry. This historical transformation paved the way for China to become the world's largest cotton producer, with India and the United States following closely behind. During this period, Old industrial powers like Britain and Germany were grappling with the rise of powerful labor unions that fought for increased workers' rights and wages. For instance, in Germany, spinners' wages increased by 53% between 1865 and 1913. On the other hand, newly industrializing countries like China and India gained momentum with their extremely low wages, attracting capitalist merchants who capitalized on the situation under government backing. In 1910, a Chinese spinner earned a meager 6.1% of his American counterpart's wages. The state actively maintained this disparity by protecting and assisting mill owners, even condoning the assassination of thousands of left-wing labor leaders in Shanghai during the 1920s. China's entry into mechanized cotton production during World War I allowed its industry to boom, with the resulting global conflict eliminating the competition from Western manufacturers. Consequently, the number of spindles in China skyrocketed by 297% between 1913 and 1931. Conversely, Britain experienced a decline as 43% of its cotton looms were decommissioned between 1919 and 1939, largely due to escalating wages. Today, China leads the world in cotton production, accounting for 29% of global output, followed by India at 21% and the United States at 14%. However, the ever-evolving nature of the industry emphasizes that future shifts in the global landscape are unpredictable and imminent. Upon completing this captivating summary of Empire of Cotton, A Global History, you will have gained a deeper understanding of the dynamic history of cotton and its significant role in driving global development, industry, and colonization. From the early stages of independent cotton cultivation in Africa, Asia, and America, the tale unfolds to reveal the relentless growth fueled by European influence, industrialization, and mechanization. Discover the crucial role of merchants, laborers, and national policies in shaping the industry's global landscape, the lasting impacts of colonial expansion and exploitation, and the current state of the cotton market dominated by a handful of major players. This engaging summary offers you a wealth of insights into the far-reaching consequences of the ever-evolving empire of cotton, 